All right, this is Mr. Anderson for Kellogg Community College Math 130 Statistics, and we're going to be doing section 9.3, testing the difference between two means w that are dependent samples using the t-test. And uh, really the main purpose of doing this is to um, do kind of before and after, you know, um, see what happens if you have had an effect on a group um, and uh, see if it's statistically significant and, you know, the idea of dependence is really to ask, does one affect the other? All right, so here are some uh, assumptions assumptions for using the t-test for two means. Uh, first of all, you got to have a random sample. Um, and also, since we're doing the t-test, the um, sample size will be less than 30. Um, your distribution should be normal or approximately normal. All right, and we also in this case are going to have dependent groups. And um, in these kind of studies here, uh, we're going to take a look at hypothesis testing um, that's going to have just a little, it's going to be a little interesting because um, they're going to change some notation on you a little bit. Because instead of looking to see if um, mu1 is equal to mu2, we're going to say that the our mu differences are zero for these null hypotheses. Now in the previous two sections, we took, we took our null hypothesis to mean that mu1 and mu2 um, you know, uh, if they're zero when you subtract them, then there is no difference. There's no, you know, statistically significant difference. So in this case, they add, you know, this new idea of mu sub d, which is, you know, the mu, you know, of group one minus the mu of group two, or before and after. Um, so in a two-tailed test, you're looking for the mu sub, um, sorry, ah, it should be a one right there. In the alternative hypothesis, your mu sub d should be not equal to zero. In a right-tailed test, your mu sub d should be greater than zero. And in the alternative hypothesis to the left-tailed test is your mu sub d should be less than zero. All right, so let me uh, hopefully have you copy that, and I will move on here. Boop. Okay, so... The, this is a little bit different, kind of a more involved um, process. I mean, you're, you're pretty much accustomed to the normal steps for uh, doing your hypothesis testing. But for the dependent group, we, we do have a little bit, of, some changes here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to state the hypotheses. Uh, we always do this. Um, and then we are going to find the critical value off the t-chart. So finding the critical value, this is going to be table F. And you're going to use your degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is your sample size minus one. Um, and then, of course, use if you since you have two groups, you're going to want to make sure that you uh, use the smaller group the degree of freedom to be a little bit more rigorous. But to find to do actually do your test, you're going to do a couple step process here. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to find the differences. Between each subject, subject, S-U-B-J-E-C-T, -E each subject, um, and then you have to kind of think about how you want to do that. In a two-tailed test, it doesn't matter which way you subtract, but um, you're going to subtract, you know, whether you want more positive or more negative numbers, depending on what kind of tail test you want. Then you find D-bar, and uh, what d bar is, is the average of all the differences. Um, now the book has notation that way, uh, which is that you add up all the differences and divide by n, uh, and that's the average or the mean of the differences. So that's your second step. And your third step is to find the standard deviation of all the differences and um, make sure that you use a calc for these. So we're going to kind of, uh, um, we're going to use a calc here. We're going to use a calculator for not only finding the average, because once we're doing that, we might as well, you know, if we have to find the standard deviation using the calc, you might as well find the standard deviation using um, the calc 
and the, and the average. It's just as easy to do that. Then for step four, you're going to make your picture or make to make your decision. And then you're going to summarize the results to, to reject or not reject. All right, so uh, that's really important. Um, we're going we're gonna to deviate pretty heavily from the book here, so um, be aware of that, that if you follow the book uh, and the way they want them to do their tables and the way they want you to set up the problem for them, it's not going to be the same way. All right, so let's do some formula checking here. All right, so the formula for... Um, Hold on a second here. The formula for finding your t-value is pretty straightforward. t-value is equal to your average of the differences minus mu sub, mu sub d, which is going to be 0 in this case, and then uh, divided by the standard deviation of the differences divided by the square root of n. And this is always going to be 0 because we're going to assume that um, we have you know the entire if you take a look at the entire samples differences mu minus mu is always going to be zero just like it was in the in the last two sections don't forget your degrees of freedom are going to be n minus one and also um, you know you can get your d bar and your um, s sub d on the calc alright now what I'm going to do first is I am going to get the the mu sub d, I'm going to get my uh, calculator to give me my average and my standard deviation. So I'm going to do things a little bit out of order, um, and I want to do that because I won't be able to see my alternative and, and null hypothesis after I, I write it down, it'll disappear. So let's just talk this out before I write it down. Um, I'm looking at cholesterol before and after medication. I've got some people who've lowered their cholesterol, but I want to make sure that I haven't rejected the null hypothesis um, when it was when it was true. Um, so at a alpha of 10%, can it be concluded there's a large significant difference? Now, since I haven't declared anything about that, that means that I'm looking for just the alternative hypothesis to be um, not equal to zero. So let me kind of let this disappear a little bit, move this to the top. And I know I'm going to need my average and I'm going to need my, um, my standard deviation of those differences. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a look at the difference between these two numbers right here. And you can see when I get to the calculator here that I've actually already got the data typed in. That I've subtracted the before minus the after, and I just chose that, you know, uh, just randomly. And I subtracted these two values, and I get these results. Now, to get my average and standard deviation, I click on the stat button. I click on the right button to go calc. And then I click on the enter button. And click on enter again. And I get my average. So there is my uh, mu sub d or uh, basically, not my mu sub d, my, uh, diff my d bar right there. There's the average of all the differences. And also here is my standard deviation, uh, 25.4. That's going to be what I'm going to use because um, we have such a small sample, we're going to use the l capital letter S. Okay, so back to my screen draw. It's going to freeze the calc in place. And now I'm going to get to uh, my steps here. Step one is my, oh shoot, <laughs> didn't click on the right thing. Boop. Okay. Uh, I've got my, my null hypothesis being that the difference of, the, the average of the differences is zero, so there isn't really a big change in the medication, not statistically significant. And my alternative hypothesis says, oh my gosh, look at this new medication. It has it is significantly different. Um, this is two tail as well, and we're going to now go to my uh, t chart. Uh, my degrees of freedom is going to be five because it's six minus one. Uh, if I look at the two tail test where alpha is ten percent, my critical values since I have two of them uh, are plus or minus two point zero one five. Um, now, if I go and check, I'm going to do my differences there and I took my differences and I entered into calc so I entered these into 
list one. And if you want to do this right underneath the problem, you can do that too. You can, you know, make little subtraction bars here as well. Don't do this in your book, but on the test this would be useful. And just do your little subtraction and then type that into the calculator. And it's nice to write things down so you're not making a mis you know, you'll make less mistakes just to check your work. Now part B is to find your um the differences there and we found that our D bar is going to be 16.7 and part C right there is going to be fine that the standard deviation of the differences is 25.4. Now we can run the formula which is going to be D bar minus mu sub 0 divided by S sub D divided by square root of the sample size. So 16.7 minus 0 divided by 25.4 divided by the square root of 6 and we get an answer of doo -doo -doo -doo, my t-score is 1.61 because I don't want to lose everything on the screen my step 4 would be to summarize the data using the picture right there and I had to be lower than 2.015 and higher than 2.015 ooh bad news camper because I needed to, I needed two, I only got 1.61, so unfortunately, wah, wah, I do not have enough information to reject the hypothesis, so my step five is to do not reject. Do not reject. So there it is. Do not reject the null hypothesis. All right, let's uh, keep moving on, moving on. We're going to take the same data from this previous side and do a confidence interval. So, to do the confidence interval, let me move this back down here. All right, and the confidence interval um, is going to use the formula. Hold on a second, let me get to my screen draw. Okay, confidence interval is going to be taking your average, plus or minus that t value of alpha divided by 2, because it's a two-tailed test multiplied by standard deviation of, of your differences divided by the square root of n. So using, uh, using the, the stuff from the previous page, we knew our d bar was 16.7. Our um, critical value for our t sub alpha divided by 2 was plus or minus 2.015. Standard deviation of the differences is 25.4. And our number of pieces of data was 6. So what this means is I got 16.7 plus or minus 2.015 times 25.4 divided by square root of 6. All right, probably should put that in parentheses so it looks a little better. Yeah, it looks a lot better, right? 16.7 plus or minus 20.9 and then what we have is I'm going to do a two-part problem here, 16.7 minus 20.9 and 16.7 plus 20.9 and what that gives me is negative 4.2 over here and what gives me over here is 37.6 so now I'm between these two guys my mu sub d and I ask you this is the difference between my two averages could it be zero and if the answer is yes if your difference of the two averages, if it could be zero, then you should not reject your null hypotheses. And take a look. It is possible with this, with this confidence interval, this 90% this, uh, confidence interval that we created here, we do not reject the null hypothesis. You're not going to get a different answer um, choosing this method versus the method on the front page. Uh, or the, the other side of this worksheet, it was actually the second page, but um, you're not going to get another difference here. Um, this just reaffirms the fact that, look, since the differences of the two averages of the two groups could be zero, there's not enough statistical information to say that this is big enough difference to change. All right, last problem here, and this is a problem you may want to you know copy down and try by yourself. Um, we're looking at, uh, this is a problem out of the book, it's a homework section problem and it looks to see the results from an obstacle course after an energy drink is administered. I know the energy drink company would love to think that they, you know, the drink made the thing, but here's their studies, uh, seconds running through an obstacle course. Um, so I'm going to let you kind of pause and, you know, try the problem by yourself. Uh, you can find this in your book. 
Um, what I'm going to do though is I, I have this on the calc, so I'm going to get the average of the differences, and I'm also going to get the average of or the standard deviation of the differences first, and I'll show you that on the screen here. So again, if you struggle with that, you know you may want to look at this up here. All right, now I have loaded this in uh, under another list, so here are the differences. Um, I chose to use negative numbers primarily because I wanted to show that the time was decreasing. Uh, you might have had this as negative 1 and this is positive 2, positive 4, positive 5. If you did it that way, that would be acceptable, but you have to make sure that your hypothesis matches what you want to find. So if most of your numbers were positive, you better have your null hypothesis being mu sub d equals 0 and your alternative hypothesis saying mu sub d is greater than 0 on my in my circumstance I want to prove that they've decreased time so I want the mu sub d to be less than zero so stat write enter oh, looks like my phone's going off hold on a moment okay I'll probably buzz with the voicemail alright so what we have here now is I am going to uh, get this rocking so let me freeze the calculator. Um, my alternative hypo my uh, hypothesis h sub zero mu sub d equals zero. Alternative hypothesis mu sub d is less than zero, and this is a one tail test. So left tail test. Okay, degrees of freedom equals 7 and we're gonna look at the 0 0.05 on the chart for one tail so that means my critical value is going to be negative 1.895 now again if you chose that most of your differences were positive you would have gotten a positive difference uh, average right there and you would choose a positive 1.895 and you would also choose this to be greater than Okay, so let's get my data up here. This is going to be negative 3.5. This is going to, my standard deviation of the differences is going to be 2.3. And I'm going to now find my t value, which is my average minus 0 divided by 2.3 divided by the square root of my sample size 8 which gives me negative 4.3, which is way, way the heck <laughs> to the left of my left tail test. Because on my left tail test, where I wanted negative 1.895, um, I've got, uh, uh, <laughs> my group is like negative 4.3. Now, as kind of a uh, uh, funny part of this problem, the book asks you, like, is do you think this is a valid test? And a lot of people say, well, it's we probably, even though, the stats say you should really reject your null hypothesis. Um, if they didn't change the, the, the test, like the, the obstacle course that these people were running, these people could have just gotten better just because they had practice. Or maybe their bladder was full of um, <laughs> sport drink and they had to run to the bathroom. All right, well, that's it for me. Uh, send me emails to get questions.